Before we start, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Stuart Scott. I'm one of the trainers here at Cloud Academy, specializing in AWS Amazon Web Services. Multi-AZ simply means multi-availability zone. And so right away, we can ascertain that this is a feature that is used to help with resiliency and business continuity. When multi-AZ is configured, a secondary RDS instance, known as a replica, is deployed within a different availability zone within the same region as the primary instance. That's its single and only purpose, to provide a failover option for a primary RDS instance. It's not to be used as a secondary replica to offload read-only traffic to. That is the role of the read replica, which is very different. It's important to understand that key difference, and this difference will become clearer as we make our way through this course. The replication of data between the primary RDS database and the secondary replica instance happens synchronously. Amazon RDS offers different configurations for multi-AZ instances based on the database engine type. So let's look at the differences between those and I want to start off by looking at Oracle, MySQL, MariaDB and Postgres. All of these database engines use the failover mechanism when multi-AZ is in use and configured. But what does this mean? If you have configured multi-AZ for one of these engine types and an incident occurs which causes an outage to the primary RDS instance, then the RDS failover process takes over automatically. This process is managed by AWS and is not something that you need to manually perform or trigger. RDS will update the DNS record to point to the secondary instance. This process can typically take between 60 and 120 seconds. The length of time is very dependent on the size of the database, its transactions, and the activity of the database at the time of failover. This automatic changeover enables you to continue using the database without the need of an engineer making any changes to your environment. This failover process will happen in the following scenarios. If patching maintenance is being performed on the primary instance, if the instance of the primary database has a host failure, if the availability zone of the primary database fails, if the primary instance was rebooted with failover, and if the database instance class on the primary database is modified. As you can see, activating multi-AZ is an effective measure and precaution to implement to ensure you have resiliency built in should an outage occur, which may result from patching being performed on the instance to a complete AZ outage, which does of course happen and has happened. However, if this process is automatic and is performed by RDS, how can you be made aware of when this event occurs? You need to be notified of this event to enable you to understand what caused the issue with the primary instance to trigger the failover. The RDS failover triggers an event which is recorded as RDS event 0025 when the failover process is complete. This allows you to configure RDS to notify you by SMS or SNS when this event is triggered. For more information on configuring RDS notifications based on events, please visit the following URL. These events are also recorded within the RDS console as well to allow you to gain further information. Let me now talk about SQL Server Multi-AZ Configuration, which instead of using the RDS failover mechanism, SQL Server Multi-AZ is achieved through the use of SQL Server Mirroring. To start with, the use of Multi-AZ is not available on all versions of SQL Server. Currently at the time of writing this course, it supports the following versions. For the latest supported versions, please see the AWS documentation relating to SQL Server. The principle, however, is much the same between SQL Server mirroring and RDS failover, in that both methods are used to provision a secondary instance to act as the primary instance in the event of an outage. SQL Server Mirroring provisions a secondary RDS instance in a separate AZ than that of the primary RDS instance to help with resilience and fault tolerance. Previously, I mentioned that with the failover multi-AZ technique, AWS automatically updates the DNS record to point to the secondary instance. With SQL Server Mirroring, both the primary and secondary instances uses the same endpoint. During an incident, the mirroring process transitions the physical network address from the failed instance to the standby mirrored instance. Before enabling SQL mirroring, you need to ensure you have your environment configured correctly first. 
You need to have a database subnet group configured, which has a minimum of two different AZs within it. And this DB subnet must then be associated to the SQL server that is going to be mirrored. It's worth noting that you can specify which availability zone the standby mirror instance will reside in. So it's always good practice to architect your application that communicates with the RDS database across multiple AZs. To check which AZ the standby instance is in, once you have enabled mirroring, you can either use the console where it will stipulate the location of the secondary instance, or you can use the AWS CLI command of describe DB instances. Amazon Aurora is different to the previous database engines that I've already discussed when it comes to resiliency across more than one single availability zone. By default, Amazon Aurora DB clusters are fault tolerant, which is designed to maintain the data to withstand the complete failure of an availability zone. This is achieved within the cluster by copying and replicating the data across different instances in different AZs within a single region. Should a failure occur of the primary instance, then Aurora can automatically provision and launch a new primary instance. However, this process can take up to 10 minutes, which can be a significant amount of time if the database is being used within a critical production environment. However, this time can be significantly reduced if you enable multi-AZ on your Aurora cluster, which allows RDS to automatically provision a replica within a different AZ. With this replica in place, should a failure of the primary instance occur, the replica instance is promoted to the new primary instance and the load and processing is taken over by this existing replica automatically without having to wait the 10 minutes like you did in the previous example. This creates a highly available and resilient database solution. It's possible to create up to 15 different replicas if required and you can associate each a priority which defines which replica will take over as primary should an incident occur. So we now know that Multi-AZ provides a feature that allows for the fast recovery of read-write services when your primary RDS instance fails. So let's look at read replicas. Read replicas are not used for resiliency or as a secondary instance in the event of a failover. Instead, they can be used by your application and other services or users to serve read-only access to your database data via a separate instance, a read replica. So, for example, let's assume we have a primary RDS instance which serves both read and write traffic. Due to the size of the instance and the amount of read-intensive traffic being directed to the database for queries, the performance of the instance is taken a hit. To help resolve this, you can create a read replica. A snapshot will be taken of your database, and if you are using multi-AZ, then this snapshot will be taken of your secondary database instance to ensure that there are no performance impacts during this process. Once the snapshot is completed, a read replica instance is created from this data. The read replica then maintains a secure asynchronous link between itself and the primary database. At this point, read-only traffic can be directed to the read replica to serve queries, perhaps from business intelligence tools. By implementing read replicas, it helps to offload this traffic from the primary instance and therefore helping with the overall performance. Do be aware when thinking about deploying read replicas that they are only available for MySQL, MariaDB and Postgres database engines. However, for the latest supported engines for read replicas, it is always best to consult the AWS documentation as this can change over time. Thankfully, it is possible to deploy more than one read replica for a primary database, and there are a number of different reasons as to why you might want to do this. By adding more than one read replica, it allows you to scale your read performance to a wider range of tools and applications that need to query the data without being restricted to a single read replica. It is also possible to deploy a read replica in a different region, which significantly helps to enhance your DR capabilities. It's also possible to promote an existing read replica to replace the primary database in the event of an incident. Also, during any maintenance that is being performed on your primary instance, where IO requests may have been suspended, then read traffic can still be served via read replica. I now want to talk about read replicas for each DB engine type and the slight differences between them, starting with MySQL. 
Read replicas are only supported where the source database is running MySQL 5.6 or later. In addition to this, another prerequisite is that the retention value of the automatic backups of the primary database needs to be set to a value of one or more. Replication is also only possible when using an InnoDB storage engine, which is transactional as opposed to MyISAM, which is non-transactional. It's also possible to have nested read replica chains. For example, you could have a read replica which replicates from your source database. This read replica can then act as a source database for another read replica, and so on. However, this chain can only be a maximum of four layers deep. If you do nest your read replicas underneath each other, then the same prerequisites discussed previously must also apply to the source read replica. For example, it must be running MySQL 5.6 and have a value of one or greater for automatic backup retention. Also, bear in mind that you can only have up to a maximum of five read replicas per source database, but a source database could be another read replica using the nested feature as just explained. You might be wondering what happens if you have a read replica created from a source database which has multi-AZ configured, at which point an outage occurs and shuts down the primary instance. What happens to the read replicas? Well, the answer is that RDS automatically redirects the read replica source to the secondary database to allow the asynchronous replication of data to occur. From an operational perspective, it's important to understand how your read replicas are performing and if they are maintaining a high level of synchronization with their source database instance. Using Amazon CloudWatch, you can monitor this value through a metric called Amazon RDS Replica Lag. This value will show you how many seconds the read replica is behind the source database. You want this value to be as close to zero as possible, or ideally read as zero. For the MariaDB engine type, much of the information remains the same as per MySQL read replica limitations. For example, you still need to have the backup retention period greater than zero, and again, you can only have five read replicas per source database. The same read replicas nesting rules apply, and you also have the same monitoring metric for CloudWatch. However, you can be running any version of MariaDB for read replicas when running this DB engine. For Postgres, there are a few more differences. I'll start with the similarities, however. You still need the automatic backup retention to be greater than one, and the limitation of read replicas is five per source database. However, the replication process is slightly different. For Postgres version 9.3.5 and later, the native Postgres streaming replication is used to handle the replication and creation of the read replica. The connection between the master and the read replica instance allows write ahead log data to be sent which replicates data asynchronously between the two instances. A specific role is also introduced to manage this replication when using Postgres. This role only has the abilities to handle and manage the replication and it does not have any permissions to modify or change the data being transmitted across the connection. Interestingly, you are able to create a multi-AZ read replica instance, meaning that when you create your read replica, RDS automatically configures a secondary read replica in a different AZ of the source read replica, much like multi-AZ for your source databases as we discussed in the previous lecture. This feature can be used even if the source database of the first read replica isn't configured for multi-AZ itself. This means your read replica could be more resilient than your source database if your source database isn't configured for multi-AZ. It's not possible to have nested read replica when using Postgres, like you can with MySQL and MariaDB database engines. However, you can still use the same monitoring metric of replica lag. Now we have a clear understanding of what is required, let's get started with the training.